Today we'll cover a lecture on frequency and time diversity technique in cellular system. The learning outcome from this lecture will be to understand the basics of frequency diversity technique, time diversity techniques, and what is the practical implementation of time diversity techniques in CDMA, that is a rake receiver, and also the understanding of interleaver in cellular systems. So first of all, let us look into the frequency diversity technique. As we all know that the diversity is basically used to capture all these multiple path transmitted signal so that we can improve the signal to noise ratio at the receiver. In frequency diversity technique, all these transmitted signals are separated from each other in terms of frequency. And the frequency that has to be chosen is based on the concept that it should be more than the coherence bandwidth of the channel so that each and every transmitted signal experience an independent kind of fade. They should be uncorrelated with each other so that it will be easier for the receiver to receive all these multipath signals. So to implement this there is one is to end protection switching which is provided by radio licensee where one frequency is used for the implementation of frequency diversity scheme to n other carrier frequencies. So for this we need one additional bandwidth for implementation of frequency diversity which is the disadvantage of frequency diversity technique as well as we required as many receivers as many frequencies that we will be using in frequency diversity that is the another drawback of frequency diversity technique next is the time diversity technique so in time diversity all these multiple paths transmitted signal are separated from each other by a time and the time spacing should exceed the coherence time of the channel. Coherence time means the, that time of the channel where the impulse response is not at all very. So that means if we separate all these multiple paths with time which is exceeding the coherence time then all these multiple paths will experience the independent fading condition and that will be helpful for the receiver to recollect all these multiple pass signal without any correlations. So one of the practical implementation of time diversity is the use of rake receiver in CDMA reception. So the next is the rake receiver. A rake receiver is the practical implementation of time diversity and it is used for CDMA reception. As we know in CDMA the user has to take a code for transmission and that code is known as Walsh code and the signal is then spread to a higher bandwidth with the help of a spread spectrum modulation technique. This spreaded signal is then transmitted via wireless channel. So when this signal is transmitted they follow multiple paths. So the rake receiver is to recollect all these time shifted version of the original signal at the receiver so to improve the signal to noise ratio at CDM. So this is based on the concept of time diversity. If all these multiple components of the transmitted signal are delayed in time, if it is delayed by more than one chip duration, chip duration is similar to a bit duration and chip rate is similar to bits per second in CDM. So if all these multiple components are delayed by more than one chip duration then all these multiple paths are appearing uncorrelated at the CDMA and rake receiver will receive all these multiple path components with the help of a separate correlator receiver as shown in figure 1. This is a block diagram of rake receiver. Rake receiver is implemented at CDMA reception and when the signal is received at the rake receiver RT it is then given to M different correlator receiver correlator 1 to M 
which are separated from each other in terms of different time zones. All these output of correlators are then provided with a variable gain and they are then summed with the help of a summer. So the received signal at the CDMA is then demodulated and a decision is being made to receive the transmitted information. So let us consider there are M multiple correlators which are used to detect M strongest multiple path components. Out of all these correlators are weighted to give the better estimate of the transmitted signal. If we consider only one multiple path correlator then the estimation will not be as good as in case of M multiple correlators. So the demodulation and bit decisions are done to receive the transmitted signal out of all these weighted output of M correlators. So the chip rate plays an important role and it should be properly selected. All these multiple path component delay should exceed one chip period then only they will appear uncorrelated with each other. So let us consider that correlator 1 is synchronized to a strongest multiple path M1 and multiple path component M2 arrives a T1 times later than the component M1. So the second correlator is synchronized to M2 but it correlates strongly with multiple path M2 and has a low correlation with M1. If any of these output from the correlator is corrupted by fading, then that can be compensated with the help of the weighting procedure. So the decision based on these combination of these M weighted outputs is helping us to improve the CDM reception with the help of rake receiver. So rake receiver is essentially a diversity receiver designed for CDM and it is based on the concept that all these multiple path components exceed the delay more than that of the chip period. So next is interleaving. So in a typical speech coder, the problem is that whenever a speech coder encoded the information, they encoded the several important bits in succession. And if there is any deep fade or noise, then all these important bits from the source data will be corrupted. So to overcome this, there is a device called interleaver. The purpose of this device is to spread these bits out in time. It can be done with the help of a block structure or the convolutional structure. Block interleaver format the encoded data into a matrix of M rows and columns. The structure of block interleaver is shown in figure 2. So the encoder output is when given to interleaver, block interleaver. It will be stored by increasing the rows and filling the column. And the output of the interleaver is read out one row at a time. So by doing this, the original information is now separated by M bits at the time. So when this output of interleaver is transmitted at the receiver, so whatever operations that we have done at the transmission has to be reversed at the reception. So at the reception, we need a D interleaver which stores this received data by increasing the row number of each successive bits and then clocking out the data row wise one row at a time. So by this we will be able to spread out the signal of the speech input. Thank you.